here, Professor Kart. Um, it's a big pleasure to welcome you at the Vienna Institute for Resources and Waste. Um, I was visiting the ECSEM conference the last days and you were there a keynote speaker giving a very excellent talk about plastics and plastics waste littering to the uh, ocean uh, in your country. Can you elaborate about the major problems with plastics in your country? Of course. Thank you for the invitation, Dr. Fellner. So in this presentation, we talked about plastics entering into the ocean, mainly having the river as a, the main pathway. So I think that's the main issue that we have. Uh, we do have a, a long coastline in Peru and waste, and in this case, plastic waste is uh, entering the ocean and generating a lot of problems uh, related to biodiversity and in the future, probably human health too. So that, that will be for me the, the most important challenge that we have as a country related to plastic waste. So is it mainly packaging plastics or all type of plastics which you which are finally discharged to the ocean? Yeah, that, that's that's a very important question. And I think we we sometimes only think about single use plastics when we think about plastic waste and the things that I have seen in, in the ocean or in the, in the beach or the coastline is all type of plastics. Uh, last time we went there and, and there was a CRT TV. And, and you can imagine the, the plastic content there. There's a lot of uh, expanded polystyrene, obviously PET, HDPE, and all the plastics that we use, included in clothes, included in shoes, and all types of products. So the situation is, is really challenging uh, based on a waste management perspective, because it's not only the straw or the cap that you throw somewhere and ends in, in the beach, but also uh, the plastic content that is in every product that we use. Also, as I mentioned uh, on, on this talk, uh, Peru is an important fishing uh, country. The uh, fishing sector is highly important. And um, everything related to fishing gear, uh, fishing gear in a way, the abandoned, lost, or discarded fishing gear is an important part of a plastic that is generated uh, as an ocean-based source, okay? And you go everywhere in, in the coastline, and you will always find uh, these uh, flood farms or, or this uh, fishing gear that is, in a way, uh, lost most of the times, uh, discarded or, or, uh, or abandoned, yes. So from a quantitative perspective, uh, what is more important, the land-based uh, littering or the land-based plastics discharge or the, the sea-based? That's an extremely important question there. When talking about macroplastics okay. um, and when talking about mass, um, the plastic that is generated in, in mainland is the most important one. And the, here you have a lot of, of, of uh, answers to this important question. Uh, due to the fact that Peru is an important, uh, uh, has an important fishing sector. So you will expect a high uh, mass with regards to a uh, fishing gear that ends as plastic waste. However, because of this mismanaged waste that we have in, in the mainland, uh, the percentage of a mainland uh, waste, plastic waste, compared to the total, at least to these two, is uh, around 90% or more, okay? So why I'm, I'm saying the, this? Because even though we are an important uh, country with regards to the fishing sector, we, uh, and so you may expect in normal conditions that a fishing uh, year, uh, year that is in a way lost, discarded, and, and, and abandoned, will be a, a high share compared to the total, but uh, it's not the case. It's important, but it's not the case. Um, in the European Union, when we talk about plastics, we talk usually about more recycling of plastics, circular economy of plastics. Um, and 
I also get the impression that this uh, idea or this model is supposed to be also rolled out for the global south. So uh, my question to you would be, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, that circular economy of plastics will solve this problem uh, in Peru? Um, what is your perception? Yeah, first, I would like to say that when talking about circular economy, uh, the global south is a good example of, of a lot of positive things. Reuse, for example. And recycling as well. You know, people live from recycling, okay? At least from a collection and separation of waste. So we have been doing that for, for a long time uh, because of a necessity, you know? Uh, obviously, a circular economy enters uh, to our countries uh, mainly thinking about recycling and mainly thinking about the facilities that we need to, to, to be able to, to recover this waste and actually recycle this waste. Uh, you have a paper on this topic with a, an important criticism to, to circular economy, the, the one I share, I think, uh, and I think that we have a lot of obstacles in, in, in this uh, new uh, buzzword, let's say it like that. It brings positive things, but at the same time, uh, even though it brings positive things, when we adopt this concept, we are forgetting about what we are as a country. And the waste picking scavengers are an important actor in this sector. And we are forgetting about them because we want to, in a way, adopt uh, this concept and formalize uh, everything related to circular economy and excluding a main actor that has been playing a very important role uh, historically. Not only in Peru, but in other countries. Mexico is another example, India, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia. So. Uh, I think there's a lot of things to, a lot of challenges there. When talking about technology, uh, today, for example, PET is being recycled in, in the country before it was exported. The same happened uh, in, in, in other countries. So yes, we, we, we could build facilities with better technologies, okay? But I think there's an important uh, opportunity that we are losing because we are not understanding the situation. I think there's a lot of things to do still with collection. And the problem with plastic waste, the problem that I, I show you with regards to plastic entering the ocean, uh, is, is an example of, of the work we need to do, to do with regards to collection. And not only collection, because you may collect, but then goes to an open dump site, or maybe the riverside. Even you have a formal collection, it could end in the riverside and then the river and then the ocean. So there are a lot of things still to be uh, to do uh, when thinking about an integrated waste management system. Okay, and I think uh, this is important to understand because uh, we often forget about this, and there's a lot of pressure, uh, international pressure, to to start building on circular economy without understanding our roots and our problems. Okay. Yeah, waste management is definitely a major task to manage or a major challenge to, to improve uh, uh, in most of those countries. Um, and you mentioned already uh, waste collection uh, is pro not manageable probably um, in the right way. Um, which other priorities do you see? I mean, which other processes in waste, waste management uh, or which, uh, yeah, where, where do you see the highest priority for improvement yeah, in waste management. Yeah, I, th I think I'm, I'm happy to be in Vienna and, and, and happy to see the, the great example with regards to waste management. You know, I, I have seen it uh, and read all the papers that, that TU Vienna has uh, led by, by yourself and, and, and all the team. So when, with regards to technologies, there, there, there are a lot of, of, of opportunities, okay? Uh, People are talking about landfills today as the main uh, option, well-managed landfills. Few people talk about waste to, to energy uh, plants, okay? Okay, you can talk about waste to energy and, 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 and relate that to landfills, but incineration uh, is, is not something that is, is being uh, talked in, in, in the country. However, we, we do have other challenges as well, okay? This is, let's say, the end of, of, of really the end of life of, of waste. And there are a lot of opportunities there, but still 
For example, the linkage between the informal and formal is, is still something that we need to build on, okay? Uh, in a way, sometimes to protect the informal. Uh, and when I'm, I say informal, we are talking about waste pickers and, and, and scavengers that really uh, have a lot of obstacles when they want to formalize, if they want to formalize, okay? And the, then the, the opportunities that we have in, in a lot of uh, resources that are, uh, are found in, in, in waste. I think, I think we, we need to understand that we have a lot of opportunities with these products. So those are kind of the, the things that I, I, I will prioritize in, 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 in a future uh, waste management plan, if you will. Yes. So these are technological issues which need to be improved, but do you think also the mindset of the, the people in Peru needs to change uh, with the perception to waste and resources? Definitely. I think uh, what the link between formal and informal is, is actually not a technology uh, problem. So, so I think that's important. And then how we behave as, as consumers. Yes. How we, uh, in a way, uh, increase our environmental awareness. Yes, of course. I typically think those are uh, more difficult, are really difficult to, 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 to adopt and more challenging. But are clearly important. I think we have a lot of things to do still with regards to separation of waste in, in our households, okay? I do separate our, uh, my waste, but I try to, to separate the waste for waste pickers to pick them up. However, most uh, municipalities are, are, are really doing important work with regards to collect, separate, uh, separate collection of, of recyclable waste. Some examples, we have few examples with regards to organics and how a, a organic waste is being collected. Very few examples. And clearly, there are a lot of things that we can improve uh, with regards to consumer and how consumer can interact with, with this waste management uh, system. That, that's totally true. You said something very nice that you said you separate the waste uh, according to the demand of the waste pickers. So uh, can you just say which materials they really are really interested in your country? That might be very specific. It's a really important question because I have been learning a lot from, from this separation I do at home. And clearly PET and bottle, uh, bottles are, are extremely important. They have a market. Uh, glass has a market, but this depends on, on where you are in the country because sometimes the, the distance from the, 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 the place where you generate waste and the facility that actually recycles glass is, is long, so there's no profit. Um, cardboard is also important, but uh, the cardboard that they like is the one that doesn't have any uh, paint or, 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 or print in, in, in there. And the Tetra Pak is also uh, something that you recycle, but uh, has a lot of volume if you don't uh, properly, uh, you know, uh, deal with that. So sometimes they just leave it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, everything with regards to metals. Metals are, are great uh, resource for them, okay? And you can see in the country a lot of places where they buy uh, these materials and, and, and you have the prices and everyday prices. With regards to electronics, they always are a nice, uh, you know, uh, resource. <laughs> mainly printed circuit boards. They have a, an international market. Plastics uh, that are connected to electronics sometimes are really difficult, okay? And if you talk about CRT glass, extremely difficult to deal with, you know? It's still a, a big problem. And now that, now that we're switching from analog to digital uh, sign, signal, uh, we'll have a, a extremely important problem with regards to dealing with um, CRT glass. And as what happened in Mexico, we have this uh, important uh, transformation that has important advantages. However, nobody is thinking about the waste management of this uh, pile of CRT glass that will come soon come into 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 the end of use uh, stream. So it could be to a certain point also kind of risk to hand over certain types of waste to the informal sector because they just do sherry picking probably and some hazardous materials are left or what yes yeah. yes but I, I, so that's why 
uh, I have a, a kind of a, a solution for these uh, problems that happen everywhere. The cherry picking is there. But if you start, uh, let's say, creating a market for the, the, the other type of, of parts or, or materials uh, to avoid environmental problems, you will solve uh, the problem. So something I learned in Mexico is um, it's very simple, open uh, burning of cap copper cables. So I went to, to a place that is connected to uh, the king of, of rubbish in Mexico, in Iztapalapa, Colonia Renovación, and I learned from them that they were buying copper cables without the need of, of uh, having only the copper that was contained in these uh, copper cables. Because they had a, a machine that was uh, chopping uh, and separating plastics from, from copper. In other parts of the world, in almost all parts of the world, uh, they like burning uh, cables. And it's not that they like, because they will get more profit if they burn. And why? Sometimes because the formal company prefers <laughs> the copper and not the, the cable, right? Makes sense. But as, as you can see, we are creating the problem, you know, in, in the formal sector. And then we are not giving an, an important solution. And in this case, the chopper machine is really cheap, you know? So that, that's my, my, my answer to, to, to this, this question. And, and I think I think it will solve more problems than sending a policeman to stop uh, open burning. <laughs> yeah, very, very good point. And I, I think really the cooperation or, I mean, working together between the formal and the informal sector is a very, very important point. Yeah, thank you very much for your interview and your thoughts about waste management uh, in Peru. Yeah, and hope to see you soon again in Myanmar. Thank you very much. <laughs>